In this video, I'll show you how to tune your E-steps and flow rate on your Endo 3 or other 3D printer to get better printing quality. Hello, welcome to Hardfirm Soft. I recently installed a printable direct drive upgrade to my Ender 3 and in my last video I replaced the stock PTFE tube with a Capricorn one. In this video I'll be tuning the printer and showing you how to do it as well. First I'll show you how to calibrate the E-steps which tells the printer how many steps to move the extruder motor to move one millimeter of filament. Second, I'll show you how to calibrate the flow rate, also known as extrusion multiplier, and also why that might not be such a good idea. We'll start with the E-steps. Now, why is this needed? In order for the slicer to do its job accurately, the printer needs to be able to extrude the right amount of filament when needed. Before we get started, you'll first want to heat up the nozzle to the appropriate temperature for the material and make sure the filament is flowing normally. Then measure 100 millimeters from where the filament goes in. You can mark it with a sharpie or a piece of tape. The place where we measure can be different depending on what printer you have or what upgrades you've done. I've converted my end of three to direct drive, so I'll measure from the top of the extruder. Now we'll tell the printer to extrude 90 millimeters and measure the difference. I'm using two different filaments for my calibration. The first one left 15 millimeters and the second one 16. That means that we extruded 84 and 85 millimeters when we needed 90. So we're under extruding a bit with both filaments. Based on the result, we now calculate the new E-steps number for our printer. Here's the formula. Requested extrude amount divided by measured extrude amount, multiplied by current E-steps. And we'll use the average of our two filaments for the calculation. 90 divided by 84 and half, multiplied by 93, our current E-steps. We get 99.05 and we'll punch that in to our printer. Remember to store the settings so we don't lose them when we shut down the printer. Now let's make sure the new E-steps number is working correctly. The change isn't always completely linear, so we can do multiple iterations of this calibration to get the perfect number. But really, it isn't that important to get this perfect because you'll still have some variance depending on the material and temperature. But I did decide to do another round of calibration and I still had an average of 1.5 millimeters of difference so I did a slight adjustment to my E-steps based on that. The second thing we're calibrating today is the flow rate, also known as extrusion multiplier in some slicers. I've seen people suggest printing a single perimeter cube without infill and measure the wall thickness to calibrate the flow rate. I had some concerns of the accuracy of this, so I decided to investigate it a bit more to find out if it really is a good way to calibrate your flow rate. So how do we get the G-code for this calibration? We take a 20 millimeter cube, set infill top and bottom layers to zero, and set perimeter count to one. I'm using 0.4 as the line width and 100% flow rate for the first print. Now let's print this. Unfortunately, it's a fast print. Use calipers to measure the wall thickness, but take care not to measure the bottom that is usually a bit wider. I get 0.55 millimeters as the thickness, and this is how we calculate the new flow rate. Requested line width divided by actual line width multiplied by current flow rate. So 0.4 divided by 0.55 multiplied by 100%. This would mean that we need 73% as our optimal flow rate. So I mentioned that I'm not actually convinced that this is a good number to use. Let's print another one, this time with everything else the same as before, but with two perimeters. I measure the thickness as exactly one millimeter, which means our new flow rate would need to be 80%. This gives us a bit of a dilemma. Which number should we use, 80 or 73? What if we use even more perimeters? Do we get an even lower number? I decided to use the higher of the two numbers for our next prints, because with my logic, that would be the one that's closer to the optimal number. So now I'll print two new prints, this time with an 80% flow rate. 
One prints with two perimeters and another one with three. Let's check if our new number gets as close to the dimensions the G-code is asking for. We're actually right on the money, both with the two and three perimeter prints. The thickness of the two perimeter print is twice the line width and the three perimeter print is triple. Now, you might ask, what's the problem? The calibration worked right on the first try, as well as you could hope. So why shouldn't you do it this way? Our dimensions are looking really accurate. But let's print some of our other test prints to make sure everything else is looking good. Unfortunately, you can choose pretty much any test print. And you'll see some under extrusion on the top. It's easiest to see when the top layers are built on top of infill. There's usually some sagging in the layers above the infill and the under extrusion happens there more easily. Here I have five calibration cubes with increasing flow rate left to right, from 80% to 96%. And only the 96% cube is completely free of under extrusion. On the 92% one it's quite hard to notice, but it's still there. So what should you take away from this video? I think you shouldn't calibrate the flow rate using the wall thickness method because it is not the right tool to get better dimensional accuracy. The right thing to do is to use the horizontal expansion setting in your slicer. When you lower the flow rate, the outer perimeter edges don't extend as far and that will make the outer measurements more accurate to the original model. But the same thing happens to every other extruded line in the print and that will leave gaps. Gaps that will make the prints weaker and make the surface look worse. The real reason why the outer dimensions of FDM 3D prints are not accurate is that we are measuring the highest bumps on the surface of the print. Every layer line leaves a bump on the print and between every line is a dip. If you could measure the print using the average height of the surface, that would be really close to the original. Unfortunately, it's not the average height that makes contact to other parts, it's the highest bumps. Long story short, don't use flow rate to calibrate dimensions. Use horizontal expansion. Tell me, have you used single wall trick to calibrate flow rate? Did you see the same issues as I did? Let me know in, down in the comments. If you haven't already, check out my earlier video where I converted my Ender 3 to a direct drive printer without any ready-made parts right here in the card. Thanks for watching. If you're new here and want to see more videos about 3D printing and DIY projects, consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. See you in the next one.